Hello and welcome. Can you guys hear me? Is my microphone working okay? Just uh, leave a comment below, please. Let me know if uh, sound check is uh, working good. Where is everybody tuning in from today? Welcome. Please let me know where you're tuning in from. The country, the city. Thank you. Where is everybody tuning in from? Uh, Ghana. I believe that is the flag of Ghana. <laughs> That's good. The Ghanaian flag almost looks like the flag from Senegal as well. I believe. The United States flag looks like the flag from Liberia as well. So I believe that's the United States. London, wonderful. I love London. Canada. Vikram, I believe that's the flag from India. Not sure. Let me know. So we got Nigeria, we got India. Okay. It's beautiful. Please let us know where you're tuning in from. Where is everybody tuning from? The city, the country? We're going to start in, uh, in a couple of minutes here. Beautiful. Uh, DDG, you asking how you can uh, get a work, work visa? We're going to talk about that today. That's this, this live is about how to identify a fake job offer, um, but that also ties into the work visa as well. So stick around. We're going to be talking about that. And we're starting in about two minutes. In the meantime, invite somebody. Uh, some of you already know people that uh, have job offers from Canada, and some of them might be fraudulent as well. Uh, so today we're going to talk about job offers, and we're also going to have a sample at the end, so stick, uh, stay around to the end because we're going to share a sample of, uh, of a job offer as well and see if we can determine if this offer is genuine or not. So we're going to be talking about job offers in a little bit. So invite somebody, tag somebody, share, let people come in. You probably know somebody who already has a job offer from Canada. Uh, we have some of these job offers circling around. We want to make sure that our people have the right information. We're going to start in one minute. Where is everybody tuning in from? Let us know in the chat box below and also invite somebody to this live so we can all learn together about uh, job offers. All right, good day to you wherever you tune in from. Sometimes it's morning, afternoon, evening, I'm not quite sure, people from all over the place. Most of the people from Nigeria and Ghana, it's probably uh, evening for you guys, so good evening. Uh, my name is Besta Gofere, Canadian Immigration Specialist at Tofino Immigration Consulting. At Tofino Immigration, we help make Canada your new home. And uh, today we're gonna talk about identifying fake job offers. There's been some weird job offers circulating um, in Nigeria, in Ghana, and people are actually falling for this. So we want to make sure that uh, we talk about that and people are more enlightened. Um, you know, I'm from Nigeria originally, right? So, in the culture in Nigeria or in some West African countries, it's, it's a little bit secretive when it comes to your know, immigration plans. I don't know, like when somebody has something they're working on in terms of immigration, they usually keep quiet about it. They don't tell their neighbors, they don't tell some of their friends. And usually it's when they arrive in Canada, that's when they say, hey, you know, I, I made it. And uh, the friend might feel betrayed because he didn't tell them. But also, I can't really judge the, the culture in terms of being secretive, right? Because this is, it's just the way it is. But that also means that sometimes, people get defrauded 
in silence. So people don't know you get getting defrauded, so nobody can really help you because you've been quiet the whole time. And also when this type of fraud happens and people cough up a lot of money and lose a lot of money, nobody also knows because they were secretive the whole time and they might be ashamed now to tell people how much money they lost. So scams like this happen privately and even after the fact, nobody knows about it and uh, it's just too painful to talk about sometimes. And when people lose money, it's just so dangerous because you might be depressed and emotional. So we're going to get to a job offer sample today, but first we're gonna talk about how to identify a job offer. So I'm gonna be sharing um, some slides with you on how to go about this, and then we'll get to our sample job offer for the day. Are you guys ready? All right, let's get started. So this is going to be tip number one, okay? So tip number one, um, you should never pay for a job offer. So some people have so-called Asians in your countries and they make you cough up considerable amount of money so that they can help you get a job offer in Canada. It is illegal to ask somebody to pay for looking for a job for them. So that's your first sign. If somebody's asking you to pay money so they can look for a job for you in Canada, that is your first sign that it is a fraudulent offer because no one is allowed to charge you to look for a job for you. Does that make sense so far? Tip number one, comment in the chat box below. Let me know if you understand what I'm saying, if it's making sense. So this right here is um, essentially it is, this is from the government of British Columbia. And you can see it tells you it prohibits any person from charging uh, someone else to look for a job for them. So this is actually law. So again, if somebody is asking you to pay money so they can look for a job for you, that is usually your first sign to say, whoa, whoa, whoa maybe back away. Because if you think about it, right? So you arrive in Canada. And let's say somebody tells you, your agent tells you, oh, you have to pay $4,000, $5,000 for me to look for a job for you. If you don't have the money now, that's okay. When you get to Canada, you're going to pay me the money. When you arrive in Canada and you start working, you still owe a debt to this agent. The person still own, owns you, right? Because you owe them money. And the government doesn't like that because when you hear you should be living a peaceful life and not owing some some Asians back home in Nigeria, in Ghana, or wherever you live, $4,000, $5,000, $100,000, whatever the case is, right? Because you can't be living life like that. You're almost like a slave. So the government prohibits people from charging to help you look for a job. You're in a desperate position looking for a job. You should not be charged for it. So I hope that makes sense. So that is, that is tip number one. We're gonna go on to tip number two. right here. And this, this is a visa is not a work permit. Okay. So this is tip number two. Visa is not a work permit. It's what's funny is, so explain the difference between a visa and a, and a, and a permit for you. So the visa is what goes in your passport. Usually it is when you get a work permit, the when, when you approve for the visa, well, the permit, the government is gonna ask you for your passport and they're gonna put a little seal on it. It's like a counterfoil. They're gonna put it into your passport. This is the visa. So this is your permission to get on a flight to Canada, right? So this is not a work permit. This is just the visa, the permission for you to get on the plane. So when you go to the airport, if this is the Accra Kotoka International Airport, for example, you will get there and the officers will look at it and say, okay, you can, you're allowed to get into the, onto the plane, right? And same thing for Nigeria, same thing for a lot of countries. There are countries that don't require visas. Like if you're coming from the United States, for example, of course you don't need a visa. You just 
book a flight and you come into Canada. But if you are coming from Nigeria or from Ghana or most West African countries, you will definitely need the visa. So if you don't have that visa on your passport, chances are you're dealing with the wrong people. So you want to be careful. The work permit, you will get it when you get to the port of entry in Canada. So I've seen some people have work permits and I'll show you a sample in a bit. Uh, you can't get a work permit if you are in your home country. It's not possible because you're not in Canada yet. It is when you get to the country, when you get to Canada, the officer is going to talk to you at a point of entry. Then they will print you the work permit. So if you get a work permit from Nigeria, if you get a work permit from where you currently live, you maybe want to back away again because you know, you're not supposed to have a work permit. You, you need a visa to get on a flight. And if you get fake documents, you're going to be in trouble. You might end up seizing your passport, you might end up being arrested, you might end up being deported. So you want to be careful with getting fake documents. But again, I'm going to share a sample. Stay to the end. I'm going to be sharing this, but you want to be really careful. The visa is to get on the plane. The work permit is what you get when you arrive in Canada so you can begin work. If you get it before then, you're probably dealing with some fraudulent people. So please be careful. We're going to go on to tip number three. How's everybody feeling so far? Comments in the chat box below. Let us know uh, how we're doing. I'm going to be sharing slides today. So I already have some slides prepared for you. So I'll be pulling them up one after the other. So this is going to be tip number three. So some of the people that have contacted me talking about job offers and what happened and how to verify the job offers, because we do verify job offers. Now, a lot of these people, they got a job offer, in quotes, job offer from a company in Canada, but they did not really apply for the job. Now, I'm not saying there are no rare exceptions in life, but if you didn't apply for a job, how come you ended up with a job? How does that make any sense? So you want to start being careful. Again, when you start putting these tips together, you start realizing that you're being swindled for your money because most likely you've probably made a deposit somewhere. And again, you can't pay somebody to help you look for a job. So we've talked about tip number one. And some of you already got a work permit in your home country. That is shady. That is very shady. And then number three, you probably didn't even apply for the job. And then you got a job offer to Canada anyways. How many into... How many companies do you know would not interview somebody, spend considerable amount of time seeing if your experiences match? Um, what, what, which employer would, would not, would be so unconcerned about your experience and your capabilities and just hire you? They didn't even really talk to you and they hired you. So that is a, a problem as well. So when you see that, you maybe want to be careful again. It's just another way of giving you false hope and making you believe so you can cough up more money. It's a very integrated scam it's, it's a sophisticated scam actually so you want to be careful you if you didn't talk to the employer you didn't have that nice conversation the interview you know tell me about yourself stuff like that you you're probably just going to lose a lot of money so we're going to move on to step number four and in this case we're going to go on to Processing time, okay? Processing time is important. Some of the job offers that I've gotten, and people also got work permits from their home country, which I said shouldn't happen. Processing time is like a month. It's very rushed, a month, two months, three months. You already have this work permit in courts. That is, that is very fast because that means you really don't understand Canada. When we apply for study permits for our students from Nigeria, from Ghana, we tell them, hey, this might take up to three months for a study permit, right? And if you're getting your stuff so fast, you know, one month, two months, I don't know. Like, I don't know if your Asian's parents are one of the founding fa fathers of Canada, but your, your processing time should be a little longer. I'll share with you processing times for Ghana and Nigeria. I took this uh, screenshots today, so this will probably put things in, in, in a bit of perspective for you. So... This is Ghana right here. You can see it says temporary residence and you, and you can look this up yourself. So Google is really like your best friend. You can look this up yourself. So you can see this is a work permit from outside of Canada and the, pers the person resides in Ghana and the processing time is 44 weeks. That is, 
that's close to 10 months, right? My math is right. 10 months and you're getting this thing done in two months. I mean, make it make sense. It doesn't make sense, right? So you can see there that somebody is really trying to make you believe something. And, and during the pandemic, the, the, the duration was way longer. So 44 weeks is a long time. And if you think of it from an employer's perspective as well, an employer wants to hire you. How many employers do you know wait 44 weeks for somebody to, to be hired? It's a really long time to wait. If, you, if, if a business ha has like labor needs and it needs somebody, they needed somebody yesterday. They needed somebody latest tomorrow. They don't want to wait one year and then get somebody to come work for them from Nigeria, from Ghana. It takes a really long time. So again, another way that people can also kind of swindle. Let's look at Nigeria, Nigeria's processing time. Nigeria's processing time is 50 weeks for a work permit. That's pretty much a year. I don't know a lot of employers that want to wait a year for somebody to come work for them. It, it takes a really long, it's a really long time. So again, be really careful if this, if the whole thing looks pretty rushed, maybe take a step back and, and, and talk to yourself a little bit to see, to see what's going on. Um, is this making any sense so far? We're on tip number four. Let me know in the chat box below if this is making sense uh, or what I'm trying to explain to you today. Let me get tip number five. All right, tip number five. So when you're in a kind of fraudulent situation, you want to check your emotions because you know when you're desperate, you're really vulnerable. You can't really see clearly. You read through something a hundred times, but you won't see clearly. And just because you're desperate and everything looks crushed. Some of these offers that we see, they want you to sign within a week and, and, and sign pretty quickly and you don't really have time to, to take a look at things. And Because you get so excited too, because you're going to Canada finally, because you've been wanting to get out of the situation you're in. And so it makes sense to just go with it. And again, a lot of you are paying these agents money and you're not telling anybody, right? You know, you, you just don't talk about it because it's our culture to just be private and be secretive. But you also lose money in, in that way as well. And, and, and then you just, you just keep quiet about it because you're too ashamed to talk about it. And in the past, I would say, I could have said, you know what? It is your fault that you're being scammed. You're responsible for that. Um, but I changed my mind and I said, you know, it's actually not your fault because you're desperate, yes, but also you didn't know better. At the end of this life, you're gonna know better. And when you know better, you do better. And then after, You've listened to this and if you keep falling for situations like this then it's going to be your fault because you should you should have known better right and some of the people getting scammed they are losing and during the pandemic somebody lost ten thousand american dollars and not just him he also called his friend to join him because when somebody does something when you call your friend the friend trusts you because it's just the way the relationship works right and the friend also lost ten thousand dollars so that's twenty thousand dollars and if you do the math with the dollar rate today, I don't even want to go there, how much how expensive that is. And these are people's life savings, right? People lose $4,500. And this, this scams are just sophisticated, they're very expensive. And people lose money, a lot of money, and they don't tell anybody what's going on, right? So this can lead to depression, and you don't want to get there because you made a bad decision like this. So I'm going to go on to another tip. And this is Google is your friend. A lot of you have job offers and you spend two minutes on Google and you say, well, I've done all of my research. No, you've not. These are sophisticated scams sometimes. And so you wanna spend all the time that you possibly can doing research, looking up the company, uh, the person helping you, the agent, is this, is this person licensed, for example, right? If you can't, there's a website called CICC. It used to be called ICCRC, where you can quickly verify if your consultant is licensed. Now, if you're using some agents that you found wherever you live and they're not on this database, you wanna be very careful. This is because if somebody helps you with an immigration application and they're paid for it, so 
they got money for this service, they have to be a licensed immigration consultant for Canada or a lawyer, right? And if you don't have that, when the government of Canada looks at this information and you don't have that, somebody helped you, that's called misrepresentation. So they usually reject your application and ban you for up to five years. That's a long time to wait if you are banned. Five years is a long time. So if you're working with somebody and some of the arguments that some of the clients that I've spoken with in the past, they say, oh, my agents in Ghana told me that he works with another agent in Canada. Well, the agreement you should be signing then should be with that person in Canada, that licensed consultant in Canada, not with the Ghanaian person because Canada doesn't recognize the Ghanaian person. And so you can get banned for five years. So if you're looking to actually work with a licensed professional and you're going to be paid, make sure they're in the government database and you can verify that or they're going to ban you. And if you're working, working with somebody locally, just don't pay them. You can, and, and that will still be fine. As long as they're not taking any money from you, you should be okay. So this is making sense so far. Do you know anybody in a situation where they've gotten a job offer and they're still waiting to go to Canada? They've, it's just been stories going back and forth and there's actually been no physical, no action. They're not here yet. Please comment in the chat box below if you know anyone in that situation. If you've been in that situation, let us know if you know anybody that has gotten job offers from Canada and uh, you're not quite sure if they're real or not real. We're going to pull up an example in a second here. I want to know uh, what you guys think. How's everything going so far? Uh, everything going good? Let us know in the chat box below and uh, we'll pull up a sample pretty soon here. So I'm going to pull up this sample right here. Thank you, KSA, for uh, leaving a the link there where people can, can check for licensed consultants. So um, KSA is a colleague of mine as well, so uh, you guys can look at that link and search uh, licensed professionals like myself, like KSA Immigration, uh, so that way you can verify if, uh, if it's legit. So for people asking about how they can get a job offer, you want to be very careful. Uh, job offers are not very easy to come by, and uh, we'll talk about it a little later, but let's take a look at this particular sample so we can determine if uh, we feel like this is a real job offer or it is not a real job offer. All right, so this company is called uh, Gaspé Salaison. There's been some uh, people in Nigeria, Ghana, that have sent me very similar uh, employment contracts from this particular company. So I am going to give my personal opinion on this job offer and then we can talk about that. You guys can let me know your comments in the, in the chat box below. Uh, but again, this is my personal opinion and uh, you see how it makes sense or it doesn't make sense, but comment below and then let us know what you think. So this is an employment contract for a company um, in an area in Quebec called Les Méchants. And uh, they offered this job offer of an administrative assistant to somebody. First, let me show you where, where, uh, where this company actually is. I believe I have a, a screenshot of that as well. So this is the province of Quebec, right? Quebec is a French-speaking province. Quebec is not a bilingual-speaking province. So some people think, oh, in Quebec, you, you speak English and French. No, we do not. Quebec is, the official language of Quebec is French. The only province in Canada that is bilingual officially is New Brunswick, which is a neighboring province to, to Quebec. Okay, does that make sense so far? And Montreal, which is a city that a lot of you would know, Montreal, Montreal, you might be able to get by speaking English and French. You might be. But the company we're talking about here, Gaspé Salison Inc., is about seven hours from Montreal. If you're going deep into Quebec this way, you pass Quebec City, you go into like Bassa Laurent and towards Gaspé, Gaspé Z, they don't speak English there in general. So that is something to put in context as we explain this to you, okay? This is where the company is located. I hope you guys can see that on the map. 
next let us pull up the the job offer okay so the job offer says this is the one for production worker again they issue different different ones but I want to address uh, I want to address the earliest job offer which is which is right here so administrative assistant does anybody know what an administrative assistant does maybe comment below let us know uh, what you think they do the main duties are right here obviously office task you're going to be emailing people you're going to be on the phone you're gonna make reservations you're pretty much an assistant right for for the office so now you think about it I've showed you where the company is seven hours from Montreal where generally everybody there will be speaking French and if you get in a job offer that sends you deep into Quebec like that you think it will be important for you to understand French speak French what are your thoughts so far please comment in the in the chat box below okay let's go through the job offer and then you can uh, let me know what you think we're gonna go through this together guys so comment let me know share with a friend I'm gonna go to page two of the job offer right so this job offer right here for page two I've removed the start dates and the end date uh, deliberately uh, but it talks about like your payment schedule it's a bit cropped out there but what it says there on the is your payment schedule so your salary will be paid to you on a weekly slash bi-weekly slash semi-monthly slash monthly basis well I live in Canada and generally people are paid bi-weekly not giving all this plenty options here you generally just pick one right if it's weekly it's weekly if it's bi-weekly it's bi-weekly not all of this different ways and also he said you're gonna get uh, your payment through direct deposit which generally happens or by check um, so you know how the spelling of check in Canada is different like when you go to the UK we can talk about all oh, Nigeria we can talk about like a car we can talk about the bonnet the bonnet for example and uh, the boots for the trunk in Canada we call it you know the hood or the trunk so people have different terminologies for based on where they live of calling different things I believe in Canada we spell check differently C H E Q U E. That's how we spell check. The way we will spell check in probably Nigeria. Uh, the check here is spelled C H E C K, which I believe is an American spelling. But again, I'm not sure. It could be a typo. It could be your way of writing. But I'm really not sure about that. But it's a bit. Again, things start to add up, and it starts to look a little fishy after a while. Uh, am I making any sense so far? Comment below. Um, also, they're giving you a furnished accommodation provided was okay sure like I don't know a lot of companies that do that but no problem um, and also on the last line there is about your food allowance you're gonna get a hundred dollars paid to you weekly for food they're paying your salary they're paying for food they give you free accommodation okay sure I, I I don't know about that one so let's move on to another another slide let me know your thoughts so far with the with the job offer what do you think so far so on here on the first line it talks about vacation time that's what this offer is some of it is a bit cropped out because of the format of uh, Instagram but it talks about your vacation time uh, I'm making any sense so far let me know if you can still hear me if everything is sounding good if you understand what I'm saying please comment below so I know you follow uh, if anybody is working in Canada here if any of you are in Canada please let me know when you started working with your company how many weeks vacation time did you get okay it will be nice to know some of you are business people and um, how many weeks do you generally give your employees if you work in Canada so I want just a Canadian example okay so on this one I'm getting four weeks vacation four weeks Okay, four weeks and it's a bit strange to me I, I understand that in in Nigeria in, in Ghana people generally take vacation for up to a month I get that so which is why this might sound, sound believable but the vacation here is is four weeks Canada generally from my experience people generally get three weeks 
three weeks. And the more you rise up the company, the amount of years you stay there, you might get a little more. But by default, I believe it is three weeks, but every company can act differently. So I don't know, but four weeks for an admin assistant position, it is a lot. An admin assistant that doesn't speak French. Okay, because this, this, this is what's going on. The admin assistant is in deep Quebec, doesn't speak a word of French, and is getting four weeks vacation. It's, I find it to be a little fishy. If anyone is working in Canada here on this live, please let us know in the chat box below. Generally, how many weeks vacation do you guys get? I'd like to know. So let me know in the chat box below. But again, things start to add up and then you realize that uh, you want to maybe review this thing a little more before you make some rash decisions that uh, might end up costing you money. But I think four weeks is a lot of time. Let's, uh, let's go on to another page here see what's going on mm, they get four weeks there and then the next one let me know how many weeks vacation you guys generally get I'll be getting some more slides for you so we can really analyze uh, this this job offer together Okay. At the end here, the company is like the first year, two weeks. That is correct. So I worked for an American company actually at some point in, uh, in British Columbia and I got two weeks vacation, but I wasn't allowed to take the vacation for one year. So I have to be with the company for one year before I was even able to take the vacation. So four weeks vacation seems like a lot. Generally, it is three weeks, but that job offer, this job offer is saying, you know, four weeks. So we want to be a little careful there. Next, let's uh, go to other pages of this uh, of this job offer and see. So right here, you can see um, it is now dear employee. Your name is all of a sudden gone from the job offer because the job offers that I know, it will be consistent with my name, dear best. It would just be dear, dear with my name. Now, in one of the pages, it is now Dear Employee. They don't even call you by your name anymore. It seemed very generic to me that this is, this is happening the way it is. A, a little generic. So I'll be a little, a little careful there um, because generally your name should, should, follow, should follow through. Um, I'll also show you, let me share this other page. And, and right here, um, right here, this is, seems to be a bit of a typo at the bottom. It's uh, Gatsby Sellers on Inc. Inc. twice. So you want to be careful of typos as well. When you read job offers, be a little careful with typos. And to the right there, you see there's a bit of thing circled. So this job offer says clearly that you have to accept the job offer within seven days. And I will need my Canadian friends for this as well. So you can let me know what you think uh, because we're going to be brainstorming here together, right? So. This says you have to accept the job offer within seven weeks. And if you don't accept the job offer, it will be automatically canceled. And after it is canceled, if you would like the job offer to be issued again, the contract to be issued again, you have to pay a penalty fee of $125. For people working in Canada, have you ever had to pay, pay an employer money to reissue you a job offer letter? Because to me, you either cancel the job, if, if I don't sign the contract within a certain time, you can withdraw the job offer, sure. And I can maybe apply again at a, at a later date. But I'm not gonna pay $125 so you can reissue the, the job, the employment contract back to me. It seems a bit strange. It almost seems to me though, that they want you to feel rushed and pressured so you can sign pretty quickly within the seven days and start to make your deposits, right? Does anybody, have anybody paid um, and the employer money to reissue an employment contract to you? Please comment in the chat box below if you think this is reasonable. Um, I would like to get your opinion on this, but this is generally what we're trying to talk about so we can help debunk some of these uh, offers that have been going on. So when the people that I've spoken to that, have, that are working with job offers like this, working with this job offer, they, the, 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 the agent 
is charging up to 4,500 US dollars. Okay, American dollars. This is more than 5,000 Canadian dollars. So, and, and they said, oh, if you want a discount, by the way, you need, to, you need to go bring two of your friends so they can give you a bit of a discount. And you know when you tell your friends about something, when you tell your friends about something, they're more likely to trust you because you're their friend, right? If I go to my friends and I say, hey, there's this is wonderful product, there's this company giving job offers, I'll, I'll, like, I'll like you to get in on it. They'll probably have to lower their guard because I am their friend and they trust me. So this is how these things work. There's a sense of urgency and there's also a penalty for not signing on time. Doesn't really seem reasonable to me. And that's my opinion. And some of you are saying it's, it's a big scam and it's not reasonable at all. So I'm, I'm getting, I'm, 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 it's, 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 it's just, and this same job offer is circulating in Ghana, it's circulating in Nigeria, probably India as well. And some other countries so it's a bit it's a bit strange it's fishy um, that you guys are falling for this and you're making payments as well to to do this let's go to another page of the of this job offer if it's uh, if it's still here and then I think I think the last page here they make you sign with your name and your passport number in your country and stuff like that uh, so that's the job offer in a nutshell here and uh, and also, they don't only do this for admin assistant, they also do this for production workers as well. People work in the, in the factory. So, and they just keep issuing job offers like this, exactly the same, in the same language in terms of the contract that uh, you do sign. So now, like I said, we, and one of, the, one of the people that contacted me sent me this. So this is what is supposed to be a work a work permit, okay? A sample of what this particular client got as a sample of a work permit. Let me know if you think anything is wrong so far from what you've been able to observe. Anybody, any takers in the comments, let me know if you think everything is perfect with this offer, uh, with this uh, work permit, or you think something is a bit strange. If you can catch it, let me know. Comments, please. Let me make sure you guys are following. What do you think about this uh, this work permit? Anyone? Again, it's the same company as the employer here, Gaspé Salaison Inc. Yeah, as the employer here. Does anybody have uh, any comments on the work permit so far? Let me know what you think. Someone said it's strange, it's edited. Okay, that's good, that's good. And anyone else? I've taken the time to remove uh, clients' personal information like their name and, and date of birth and this client is particularly from Nigeria so I left that on there so you can know this is actually happening uh, close to somebody you know, right? So, first thing that I said, I said a work permit you get when you arrive at a port of entry, when you get to Canada. So this is not a visa, this is a work permit, which is strange because it is the officer at the border that is going to give you this permit. This client got this permit while they were still in Nigeria. So that's the first thing that is odd, okay, because you shouldn't you shouldn't get a work permit in your home country. You get a visa. Okay, so number two, study permits, work permits, they don't have your, your passport photo there. The, the, the person's face has been scratched off there, but they don't have your photo. They do not have your photo. And um, so that's another, another flag. Number three, does anybody know the name of uh, Immigrations Canada? Because we used to be called CIC, right? CIC we used to be our name, so let's pull that up. What does CIC mean? Citizenship and Immigration Canada, right there at the top. That has been changed 
a long time ago. So if you look at the top left of this, it says Citizenship and Immigration Canada. That is not our name, right? So this is very old, old work permit, not something that was issued this year or last year. We're called IRCC, so somebody said that, right? So at the top left-hand corner, you see it says CI, like Citizenship and Immigration Canada. So that's right there, that right there, you need to stop and just, and just leave it alone, right? Uh, we're not IRCC, Immigration, Refugee, and Citizenship Canada. That's where we are right now. And we've changed that name for a while. And there's also a stamp. How many people have like in Canada that came on a study permit or work permit have a, have a stamp of Immigration Canada? There's a stamp right there by the passport photo at the bottom that says Immigration Canada. Under that with, with the, the thing that is scratched off, under that it says Quebec. Immigration Canada, Quebec? It's nothing like that. IRCC covers the entire country. The admission of somebody into Canada is administered by Canada. Not by Immigration Canada, Quebec. That is not a thing. It doesn't exist. And there's a stamp with your passport photo on it. Looks very fishy to me. Do you guys think this is a real work permit? Let me know in the chat box. Do you believe this is a real work permit? Let me know what you think. Any takers? Is this making sense so far? Are you guys learning anything? <laughs> Someone said I don't want to laugh. Okay. So definitely not a, a real work permit. But they got it. And this particular person paid more than 2 million Naira. I don't know what that is in, in dollars anymore. Like the, the Naira loses value every day. Um, but that will be at least, at least $4,000, right? At least $4,000, I believe. Um, but $4,000, $5,000. But that's, they, they lost a lot of money. We're talking life savings here, guys. Life savings that people are losing every day to scams like this, right? So you wanna be careful but I don't believe you, you get a work permit before you arrive in, in this country. Let's see if I have any other slides here that I wanna share with you. And this doesn't happen to just one person. You can see the, the client's name is on this list. Everybody's name of, has been removed, right? But it, they do it to multiple people at a time. And it looks like things are happening. But I don't know one person that actually immigrated to Canada through this company yet. I, mean, I, I stand to be corrected, but I don't know one person that the process actually went through and they've arrived in Canada so far. I've not heard it. But I know people that have paid a lot of money and didn't have any results and people are getting impatient, right? And remember when I said Google, Google is your friend? And Google is your friend. And, and, and let, let, let's see what Google says, right? So if you put on Google, you're going to see this building right here. This is... This is the supposed gas based Amazon company. And Google will show you this building because you can, you can take a look. So it almost looks like, you know, everything is jolly good, right? So that's, that's one thing people generally look at. This is a clearer picture. You, you, you look at it and, and that's, that's where the business is in Quebec. But like I said earlier, again, these are my opinions, right? Like I said earlier, this is where the company is. Seven hours from Montreal and People don't generally speak English in this deep into Quebec. Because Quebec, like I said, is not an English-speaking province. It's not a bilingual province, as some, some people might think. This is a French-speaking province. French is the official language of Quebec. So if you're going to be an administrative assistant this deep in this country, in Quebec, it would make sense for you to speak English. If, if, that's, that's just my opinion. Let me know what you think in the in the comments below. And if you know anybody that's 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 gotten this job offer as well, um, comments in the chat box as well, because people are doing this secretly. So here is a here's just from Google, right? Put it in Google. You put a company's name there, and it's happening to other people as well, right? 
So this person says, Sir, I got the job offer letter from, from Gaspe Salison Inc. company. I saw your review on Google Maps. Is the company real or fake? And goods, and goods, to, and goods to come there, please suggest me, sir. Thank you. And somebody else commented at the bottom saying, Ready, I got the job offer too. What happened to your application? People are commenting, people are starting to have conversations. But the keynote here is what happened to your application, right? Has there been any progress? I know a lot of people that have started this process, but I haven't seen any results yet, which it's a concern to me, right? Again, this is happening so far, as far as I can tell, Nigeria, Ghana, India. And it could be happening in other countries as well, I don't know. But do you know anyone that's gotten this job offer? Let me know. Have you done any, have you heard about it, right? And when these people talk to their agent, when they talk to their agent, a few days later, all of a sudden, they have a job offer. How can you get a job offer without applying for a job and also doing a proper interview with somebody and you just, you have a job offer and you have a work permit from Nigeria? Again, let's take a look at a work permit, right? The work permit looks very shady. And you get, you don't get a job, you don't get a work permit while you're in Nigeria. The same way you don't get a study permit if you're in your home country. You get it at a port of entry when you arrive in Canada. That's when the officer asks you a couple of questions and they issue you the study permit or the work permit. So in this case where people are getting the work permits while they're still in their home country is a cause for concern. And if you're going to be spending two million naira, four thousand dollars, four thousand five hundred dollars, ten thousand dollars, I I I don't know what to tell you. It it makes more sense. It's smarter to book a consultation with somebody. Say, hey, I'm going to spend a hundred dollars and have this conversation to determine if this is if I'm being swindled or not. But Nigerians keep very quiet. They keep very quiet when they're doing things secretive like this, and they lose all of their money. And they don't tell nobody. And the shame doesn't let them say anything at all after that. A work permit shouldn't have a passport on there. We are not called Immigration Canada Quebec. And we're also not called Citizenship and Immigration Canada. It's IRCC. So this work permit looks very strange to me. And this person already lost a lot of money. I've been on a few calls with this, with this particular client before. And sometimes when people are losing money, they do not believe. They do not believe that uh, it is happening. They don't know when to pull back because they've already lost so much money. You feel like maybe if you put a little bit more money, it will, it will make sense. It doesn't make sense. Okay? They'll take you for everything you got. And again, I'm going to recap here and go to the processing time for a work permit. Work permit processing time for Ghana here says 44 weeks. Work permit for Nigeria here says 50 weeks. I don't know one employer in Quebec that wants to wait for one year, one year to get an employee to work for them. One year. Do you think as a businessman I want to wait to get an employee for one year? I don't want to do that. And the employee doesn't even speak French. Because Nigerians generally don't speak French. Generally. Right? So you think I'm going to wait for one year as a businessman. Hire somebody from Nigeria, from Ghana, that's predominantly English, and make them my admin assistant. Doesn't make sense to me. Also, in Canada, generally, when an employer wants to hire somebody, they have to go through a process called LMIA which is called the Labor Market Impact Assessment. Essentially what this means though is the employer needs to try their best to hire somebody locally, you know, a Canadian citizen or a permanent resident. If they couldn't find anybody, they can't find a suitable candidate, then they can go abroad and hire somebody. They need to, in the LMI process, 
requires generally that they have a, uh, a recruitment effort. So they post a job on, on a website, try and hire people. They post a job for a minimum of four weeks, I believe. So that's a month right there that you have to try and post this job and then try and hire somebody. Then let's say they hire you and then wait another year to bring you in, make it make sense. So if you, and a lot of people that message me, they're like, oh, how can I get a work permit, get a work permit, get a work permit. Just stop, okay? If you wanna to come to Canada, you can be here in six months if you, if you go through a study permit route. So maybe take the study route, right? Take the study route, that will make sense. But the work permit requires the employer to do a lot of the work and offer you a valid job offer, right? And a valid job offer is not easy to come by. For Nigerians, I'm sorry, it's the truth. For Nigerians, it is not very common. So if you ask me, how can I apply for a work permit for you? The first question I'm gonna ask you if you're coming from Nigeria or Ghana is if you have a job offer. So if you don't have that job offer, just maybe stay away. If somebody is giving you a job offer, do your research. That's where you start, just do your research. See if other people have gone to Canada that have made it through that same way that you're trying to go through, that same company because a lot of our brothers and sisters have lost money. And this has been happening for a very long time, but I only like caught wind of it during the pandemic. 10,000 US dollars, gone. How long do you think it takes to save that kind of money? I didn't even know some people had that kind of money just laying around to just throw around to Asians in Nigeria. And you have $10,000, but you don't have $100 to book a consultation. That will be your fault, right? So when you lose that money, don't, don't call me because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to feel too bad for you and, and, and it's just, I don't want to be in that position. So take this before the fact and learn before you start throwing money around. I didn't even know you all have that kind of money, $10,000, like really? So let's go through this again in terms of like our recap, right? Our recap is the first thing is you should not pay f for a job. You shouldn't pay for a job. This is the government of British Columbia, like right here is example, right? This is law, this is actually law. You can't pay somebody to help you look for a job. It puts you in a very vulnerable position. If you think about it, you don't have any money. That's why you want a job. Because if you, had, if you were so rich, you wouldn't. You wouldn't, uh, you wouldn't need a job. So you don't have all the money in the world, right? So then, this is the law right here. You can see this is a sample from one of the provinces called British Columbia. It said it prohibits any person from charging a fee for providing employment services or information. You can't do that. You can't do that. So if somebody's trying to charge you to get you this job in Canada, it is illegal to do, that's your first cue, back away. Like just, just stop right there. But I know some of you won't listen because you're desperate and that will be your fault because I understand the situation in, in home countries are a bit difficult sometimes. You shouldn't, you shouldn't waste your money trying to pay somebody to look for a job for you. Number two, a visa is not a work permit. We talked about this. If you get in a work permit in your home country, not good. That's a very bad sign because you should get a visa. Visa is the permission to get on the plane. The work permit is what you get from the officer when you arrive and they verify all of your documents. That is true. And then they print you off a work permit and you go on your way. Right? So that's the, that's the second uh, clue right there. Number three, Let's, uh, let's get other tips for a recap. Some of you didn't apply for the jobs. You didn't apply, but you get in a job offer. How does that make any sense, right? Did you have a conversation, a lengthy conversation with the employer? Did you ask them about the company values? Did they ask you, tell me about yourself and see how you possibly fit with this job? Nope, didn't ask, don't care. You just, you just pay money and, uh, and you get this job offer three days later. It's a bit strange, really. I mean, let's face it, right? bit strange so that's for that Google is your best friend processing time we just looked at processing time for for Ghana Nigeria 44 weeks 50 weeks that's one year I don't know a lot of employers that want to wait for one year to to do that right so guys in your opinion let me know let me know in the chat box below do you think that job offer that we just went through is a real job offer or you think it's a fake job offer let us know in the chat box below Again, 
appreciate your comments let's take a look on a side note on a side note we have a podcast guys it's called the Canada Awaits You podcast by Tofino Immigration yes it is now on Spotify Apple Music and Google so we're going to be talking about this podcast is just to demystify life in Canada you know what life actually is like for people that live here you know the highs the lows some of you think Canada is heaven um, it is not heaven there's things that go really well there's things that are weird sometimes and in this podcast we're going to be addressing all of those uh, right now we're doing a series called seven ways to immigrate to Canada and so it would share like different ways that you can actually immigrate to Canada so make sure you listen tune in uh, it's on Spotify on Google Podcasts and uh, Apple Music is also on our website as well so that's a side note there for you guys so somebody is saying the job offered is definitely fake any other comments what do you guys think what do you guys think do you think it's a real job offer or it's a fake job offer right admin assistant in a province of Quebec that uh, where French is the language of communication especially that deep into Quebec and you're gonna be an admin assistant, sending out emails, phone calls, and making travel arrangements and stuff like that. Do you think this is a real job offer, or are you a bit concerned? Somebody else says it's fake. Um, you know, somebody else is uh, saying how they can arrest. Uh, in Nigeria, I don't know how you can arrest people in Nigeria. It's, um, I mean, Nigeria is, uh, the, the, the justice system is, um, it's a bit weird. I think you know how we say in Nigeria prevention is better than cure right so I would say like you should never pay somebody to get you a job if you take anything from this you shouldn't pay somebody to get you a job offer right so if you do your due diligence and just just leave it alone right right so we, we looked at we look at the business search uh, dr. Addy welcome it's good to see you um, I'll be calling right after this <laughs> so the business actually exists in, in Quebec, but does, it, does that mean that this, this, this company, this job offer itself is legitimate? That is, that is my question to you, to you guys. Do you think it's real? Do you think it's fake? In my opinion, I don't think it's a real job offer. And I know some of you have sent me this same job offer from different countries before to help you, to help you verify this job offer. But, uh, and a lot of people paid a lot of money for this four thousand five hundred dollars ten thousand US dollars 2.5 million naira and uh, still to this day no results right so prevention is better than cure I hope this has been helpful um, my name is Besta Goffere Canadian immigration specialist at Tofino immigration consulting and at Tofino immigration we help make Canada your new home I hope you learned from this session this is going to be saved on IGTV as well and so you can replay it I hope you learned a few things and I hope you can share with your friends even if you have lost money in the past and you're ashamed to talk to other people about it um, just don't do it again because in the past you didn't know better but now you do so don't don't do it again and make sure you share with people on how to identify job offers that might be a bit sketchy as long as you're not paying money for it fine okay I hope you had a good time and we'll see you next time thanks for tuning in